ladies and gentlemen, Mary Santora. created a, a puzzle for myself. Hold on. Got a hundred things and there's chords and fucking... All right. Hi, how we doing, everybody? <laughs> My God, thank you guys all for coming out tonight. I appreciate you. Give it, give it up for John and Jimmy and Bill. <laughs> I have to keep fucking with the chords because I wore these dumb shoes. So I'm like, I got to make sure that I don't run into anything. Oh man, I'm excited to be here. I'm so happy to be out of the house. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes, God. It's been a weird year, man. I always knew I was an alcoholic, but the pandemic has only confirmed that, you know? Like, <laughs> cause now anytime I go anywhere and use hand sanitizer, my mouth waters. <laughs> yeah, that's awkward at Giant Eagle, isn't it? <laughs> Just walking through the grocery store like, Zzz. oh shit, I do miss 151. Wow, that is wild. I do miss that. I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm trying to get my life together. I don't know, I'm working on self-love. That's been a big thing, I think, this year. Everybody's trying to figure out self-love. I don't get it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I don't know what self-love is. I don't understand it because according to my friends, it's just bath bombs. That's all that it is. <laughs> Just use a bath bomb and you'll be happy. And I just think that that's not true, you know? Because nobody ever uses a bath bomb when they're having an amazing week. You don't see that. Nobody like gets promoted and then engaged and then uses a bath bomb. That's never happened. What happens? The test results come back positive and then you use a bath bomb. You're three glasses of wine in standing over a lukewarm tub. You got a headache from the nine different scented candles that you lit. You're just using that bath bomb like a magic eight ball. You're just standing over that tub like, all right, was Tony the one who gave me HPV? It's blue glitter. Maybe the ring around your tub will make you forget there's no ring on your finger, you know? I'm not gonna be the fourth comic to reprimand you guys, okay? <laughs> because Bill told a joke about kids dying and you were like, oh, and then John told a joke about kids dying and you were like, oh, and then Jimmy looks like a kid who died. <laughs> Loosen the fuck up, all right? I'm not gonna tell you again. Oh man, you wanna hear more about bath bombs now? Is that where we're at? <laughs> I guess I just don't really understand it. Like I look at self-love the same way anti-vaxxers look at vaccines, you know? I'm just like, I don't understand it, so it must not work. <laughs> Basically anybody using a bath bomb is one bad day away from swapping it out for a toaster. I was like, maybe I'll go buy some new clothes. Maybe that's, I don't know. Maybe that'll make me feel better. I don't know. I went to a store and it was a high-end store that I knew I couldn't afford to be in, okay? And like the sales associate, as soon as I walked in, I saw her face drop and she just looked at me like, this bitch has a gift card for sure. Like that's, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> I was kind of shopping around and I picked up a few things and uh, she, she did something that I had never happen had happened to me before. She was like, oh my God, let me start you a fitting room. And I was like, oh, how sweet is that? You're just gonna start me a fitting room, so all my stuff's there. Until I get into the fitting room and there was like 15 things that I did not ask for that all cost $100. And I was like, why? Why would you put me into a small confined space with things that I desperately want but can't afford? <laughs> then I was like, oh, this is how every dude feels at a strip club. <laughs> Like, 
My issue, I was a little upset, she brought me a bunch of crop tops. And if you wear crop tops, I'm happy for you. If you have that body confidence and you wanna show it off, good for you. I'm not wearing a crop top, okay? Because my belly button looks like a frowny face, all right? <laughs> my body with the eyes and the belly button looks like a frog sipping tea. I'm not doing it, all right? <laughs> like me wearing a crop top in public is the equivalent of taking a tuna fish sandwich on an airplane, all right? <laughs> It's like, yeah, I'm allowed. <laughs> it's just really inconsiderate, you know? Like, I'm not gonna do that to you guys. Like, I told her, I was like, hey, just so you know, you can take these crop tops back. Uh, I wear entire shirts. And <laughs> she got super feminist on me. She was like, no, girl, you love your body. Okay, you rock that crop top. Listen, Marilyn Monroe was a size 14 and she was a sex symbol. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe was also shaped like an hourglass. Like, I'll take a size 14 and shape like an hourglass over a size eight and shape like a Jack Daniels bottle. <laughs> She's like, I know what you need. You need mom jeans. That's what you need. That'll be, you need, they're high-waisted and they're destroyed. I was like, oh, because kids ruin your life? Is that the symbolism there? <laughs> You'll feel confident in mom jeans. And I was like, I'm not wearing mom jeans, dude. I won't. On principle, I can't. I have spent thousands of dollars to make sure that I never become a mother. <laughs> Kids die in my jokes, too. <laughs> if that joke made you uncomfortable, I have a right to tell it, okay? I've actually carried, listen, I do. Some people don't think women have the right to choose what jokes they tell. It's fucked up, you know? I actually have carried two pregnancies to full term, menation. <laughs> I love it. Some of you are like, hell yeah, Planned Parenthood, your body, your choice, girl. The rest of you, still from Ohio, so. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to be less white trash. It's just, and then when I was getting ready, you know what I said? Oh, I broke my chain belt, so. wearing fucking cheetah print. That's how well it's going. <laughs> I'm trying to, I don't know. My girlfriend asked me to go to the art museum with her the other day. And uh, I'll tell you this, it took me 30 years to go because I did not know that it was free. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> And I was a little offended when she asked me at first. I took, I was like, she thinks I have art museum money? Are you kidding me? So when she asked me, I immediately turned into Ruth Langmore from Ozark. <laughs> yeah. She was like, hey, if you're not doing anything Saturday, we're gonna go to the art museum, you should tag along. And I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you think that on my one day off a week, the fuck I wanna do is go look at some goddamn painting some guy five years ago thought a tree looked pretty? That's who the fuck you think I am? Listen, bitch, I ain't going to no art museum, and if you're going to make me say it, it's because I don't know shit about fuck. <laughs> and then I found out it was free, and I was like, oh my god, where's my scarf? <laughs> Oh no, I'm like so cultured, thank you. Thank you so much, I'm very, I love art, thank you. Like, <laughs> I actually, uh, I found this out at the art museum. I found out that uh, Pablo Picasso, he is like one of the best, most influential painters of all time, he invented cubism, okay? And I didn't know that. He took nothing and he invented a style of painting. It's pretty cool, right? And he did that at the same time in his life that he was going through a divorce. I'm like, that's how that dude handled a breakup. 
That's amazing. Like, so the next time you're staring at some cubism piece, just remember, that was Pablo Picasso giving himself bangs. <laughs> That's wild. You know what I did my last breakup? I gained 35 pounds, and then I dyed my hair late for court red. <laughs> You know the color. <laughs> it's the same one as the chick in front of you at the DMV who has none of the right papers. You know? She's just standing there in her SpongeBob pajama pants. <laughs> the woman behind the counter is like, ma'am, this is a library card. Like, I don't know. <laughs> this isn't proof of residence. <laughs> I saw a picture of myself from that point in my life. The deepest, darkest depression I have ever been in. Facebook was like, hey, thought you might want to see a picture of that. <laughs> yeah. Remember four years ago? That was pretty cool, right? Four likes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, your aunt commented, be blessed. So. <laughs> I hate Facebook memories. I hate them, okay? I understand for people who have like kids, like, oh my God, four years ago, Tommy took his first steps. But if you're a blackout drunk train wreck like me, it's always like, dude, six years ago, I put that cigarette out on that cop. <laughs> it's never anything good. I took a screenshot of that picture. I sent it to my sisters and I was like, hey guys, nobody wanted to say one word to me. <laughs> guys are supposed to be my best friends. Nobody thought this was a giant cry for help. They were like, oh, you told us you were living your best life. <laughs> so we thought you were fine. <laughs> I was like, living my, you, that was just Wendy's four for fours and White Claw. That's all that that was. <laughs> I love White Claw, okay? I love it. Here's, if you don't know, it's just alcoholic soda water. That's all that it is. Basically, the food and beverage industry found out that women were chasing their Xanax with LaCroix, and they were like, we can do that. <laughs> it's the official beverage of a strong, independent woman. It's just a bunch of bitches who look exactly like me, boomeranging on Instagram. That's all it is. <laughs> We just got our little white claws. We're like, <laughs> I don't need a man. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a man until you're the fifth wheel at an amusement park. Been there, that's a fun day, isn't it? You wait in a two and a half hour line, your couple friends get on the ride, the ride operator stops you. We got a single rider. You're on your own, lady, maybe try Tinder. <laughs> Mentioned gaining a bunch of weight after my last breakup. My last breakup was a doozy, man. I called off a wedding. It was rough. Yeah, that's a proper response, right? Because <laughs> nobody's ever like, I was engaged, and now I'm happily married, right? It's always like, yeah, no, I was engaged. Um, do you know how pawn shops work? <laughs> I don't get it. Is anybody in here engaged right now? Like you're gonna fucking say it after I just... Over there, when's your wedding date? What? Nick, when's your wedding date? And she said, Nicole. So, I don't know if she maybe just came from a wedding. It was like, my name's Nicole. I was at a wedding today. <laughs> That's okay, when's your wedding date, Nicole? I was like, all right, yeah, sure. And maybe that's tourist season, I have no idea. I don't know how it works. I've never had that answer to that question before, so I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to process it in my head. And then I forgot for a minute that the Browns played today and I was like, that checks out. Okay, <laughs> that's for sure, I get it. <laughs> 
Oh, man. I, we did not get engagement photos done. I think engagement photos are stupid, and I think anybody who ever got them, you're dumb. I really do think that. <laughs> you should have just taken $300 and lit it on fire, to be honest with you. <laughs> Because at no point in anyone's relationship are they just hanging out in waist-high grass. That doesn't happen. That's not real. You know what's in waist-high grass? Ticks. That's disgusting. Yeah, that warm, fuzzy feeling that's not love, that's Lyme disease. I had, to, uh, I had to move out on my own. I had never lived on my own before. And that was crazy. When we broke up, I was like, oh, I'm living by myself. I'm you know, I thought I was doing it right. And then I found out there's this thing where you have to pay all your bills. And <laughs> never had that happen before. Not a fan, to be honest. So I was trying to cut corners a lot to try to save money. You know, I like started drinking at home to save money. <laughs> And you're right, that is problematic, okay? Because <laughs> there's no one to cut you off. That's, whew. Because like if I go to a bar and I have seven shots of vodka, they're gonna be like, yo, you can't have any more, all right? But if I'm at home and I have seven shots of vodka, I just wake up in my wedding dress. <laughs> my ex and I were not a good couple. We were not, we would fight constantly. Like we were the couple that would fight in public and make it awkward for everybody else. You know, you ever been accidentally seated next to that couple at the bar? We're just halfway through a meal and I'd look over at him and be like, why do you use so much fucking ketchup? No, seriously, it's disgusting, honestly, because no, here's the thing, lower my voice? You think I give a shit what these people think about me? No, because the problem is not my voice, okay? The problem is I thought that we agreed on a budget together, okay? That's what I thought, all right? And I can't just keep buying ketchup, all right? I don't know what it is with you, but you need to figure out your obsession with condiments, okay? He's like, oh, my obsession with condiments, okay. You wanna talk about why your leggings don't fit, Miss Keto Diet? Yeah. You can't put mayonnaise and butter on everything, okay? No, listen, you and your sister get together. You know what, no, I will take another beer, actually. I'll take another beer in the check because someone's had too much again. Again, you're just like your fucking mom. I know. Yeah, you guys are like, we did that tonight. Holy shit. Always fighting, couldn't agree on it. He really wanted kids and I can barely remember to feed my cat. <laughs> can't do that with a kid, you go to jail. Um, do you guys know what happens if I go too long without feeding my cat? I buy a new cat. <laughs> he didn't like it when I stayed out too late. He didn't like that, don't come home late, you know? And then I didn't like it when he fingered my best friend at a Brad Paisley concert, so. <laughs> I know, you guys are uncomfortable. She put her hands over her mouth, she'll, oh my God. <laughs> Nicole's like, what happened to fingering? Why don't we do that? Listen, it's something traumatic that happened to me, okay? And my, therapi my therapist told me that the more I talk about it, the more I'll be able to accept the fact that I was at a Brad Paisley concert, okay? <laughs> I have two sisters that helped me out. I mentioned them earlier. My sisters helped me out through that, through that breakup, but they did it very differently. Like, they had very different approaches. My younger sister was like, you just gotta get laid, okay? Listen, trust me, you just gotta get laid. The best way to get over a guy is to get under another. Like, oh, oh. Okay, 22-year-old sister with a six-year-old kid. I don't know about that, you know? My older sister just wanted to get me drunk. That's it, she just wanted to party. Let's go get drunk, just get fucked up. You'll figure out all about him, you know? 
That was her. But here's the problem with her is that she's the person who always wanted to buy shots. That asshole friend. If you have that friend, they don't love you, okay? I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> shots are never a good idea, ever, okay? You know why? Because no one in this room has ever woken up the next day like, yeah, I'm so glad we did shots last night. <laughs> It's never happened. In the history of alcohol, it has never happened. What happens? You wake up on your bathroom floor just like, fuck, I think I sent that picture to my dad. Oh, God. <laughs> no, who bought shots? Who bought shots last night? Breakup messed me up, man. Bad day after bad day after bad day. Like, you ever have such a bad day that you chase a shot of vodka with fruit snacks? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Gushers if you're on Wick. <laughs> you ever have such a bad day that you go to pick up your birth control from Discount Drug Mart and you find yourself checking out with four bottles of wine and three boxes of off-brand pizza? Uh, just explaining to the 67-year-old pharmacy tech that it's girls' night! <laughs> but it's 3 p.m. on a Wednesday and she didn't ask. <laughs> Do you ever have such a bad day that you ate inside of an Arby's? <laughs> That's a bad day. That's the kind of bad day where you're like, whew, I don't just want to consume questionable roast beef. I want to smell like questionable roast beef. The kind of beef you get at Bill's Strip Club. One of the things I saw online, I was doing a lot of Googling, how to get over a breakup, stuff like that, you know, because BuzzFeed gets me. And, uh, one of the things I saw on a couple different websites is said that one of the things, if you're feeling depressed, that you can do is uh, you can masturbate. It releases endorphins, it takes your mind off things for even just a couple of minutes, you know, and I'll tell you what, it works. It does work. But yeah, there's <laughs> two super horny dudes in the back. <laughs> it's like, I'm cranking it right now, motherfucker! But yeah, okay. Also illegal. Uh, not now, but yeah. It does work, uh, it did make me feel better, but I developed like this weird Pavlovian response to sadness. <laughs> yeah, super awkward, man. <laughs> like, you can imagine how I felt when I was watching Toy Story 4 with my niece and my eyes weren't the only thing that were wet. I mentioned wanting to be less white trash. I want, I, my whole family is this way, dude. Every single one of, every member of my family is basically if a Code Red Mountain Dew was a person. <laughs> All of us. Grew up super poor, man. My mom was a hoarder. Have you guys seen that show, Hoarders? Yeah, don't get weird, it's fine. There were, <laughs> there were pros and cons to growing up in a hoarder house. Like a con, we only had one path that went through our whole house, you know? Pro, I'm awesome at corn mazes. <laughs> October's my time to shine, all right? No one's getting lost on my watch. My sister and I used to play a game called Find the Floor. Uh, it's a very real game. Uh, if you've never played, the best way I can describe it is like if you've ever dug through the $5 movie bin at Walmart, you know? Like you're trying to get to the one prize movie at the bottom, but all these shitty Keanu Reeves movies keep getting in the way. Like, let's find the floor. My mom and I disagree on a lot of things. We didn't get along for a long time. She would always want to, you know, she didn't like that I did stand up. She would always throw it in my face that I traveled too much when fucking, that's not an issue anymore. She'd just be like, you know, Mayor, you did 20 shows last month and saw your sister zero times. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> you know, Mom, you found 15 floor lamps last month and have zero light bulbs, <laughs> so. <laughs> I 
I recently found out that my dad's been lying to me for a good portion of my life. I had no idea about this. Oh, shit. Did you just, did you just have a dad lie, too? You all right? What's, is your dad lie okay to say out loud? And now they're quiet. Okay, you guys are weird. You guys are weird. I, uh, last time we went on a family vacation, I was 13 years old and went to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, okay? I didn't want to go in the ocean because I was afraid of sharks, all right? My dad told me, Mary, don't worry, they put up a shark net. <laughs> around this part of the ocean <laughs> so you won't get bit. Now that's fantastic, okay? Until I was in Hawaii two years ago explaining shark nets to my 30-year-old friends. <laughs> you never swim faster in your life than when you're day drunk in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Like, what the fuck do you mean there's no nets? My dad's a gambler, too. You'll learn your lessons differently growing up in a household with a gambler. Like, I had friends whose parents were very, you know, into nature and things like that, so they'd be like, hey, come on, come outside, hurry, hurry, hurry. It's a clear night, look at this, look. See that up in the sky? That's three stars. See those three stars in a row right there? That's Orion's belt. It's beautiful, isn't it? That's a constellation. Stars make up constellations. My dad was like, Mare, get over here, check this out, look at that, okay? There's a star, star means auto win, okay? <laughs> Three stars in a row make up our rent, so how about you start scratching? <laughs> Never forget this, man. I was 10 years old, I was taking a math quiz, all right? One of the questions on the quiz was, 11 is a number that is only divisible by one and itself. 11 is an example of a prime number, is what they were looking for. 10-year-old Mayor wrote, double down. <laughs> Yeah, that is not a wrong answer, guys. You need to be doubling down on 11, okay? But it will get you a phone call home. I promise you that. Grew up very poor and very religious. I think those two things go hand in hand a lot. You know what I mean? I think poor people are usually the most religious because it doesn't cost anything. You know what I mean? Like, there's no credit check to get into heaven. Like, that's, what's God gonna foreclose on my soul? Good luck, you know? Like, we were the kind of family, like, if Jesus couldn't fix it, maybe the Powerball would. You know, like, that's... <laughs> my brothers took that religion thing a little too far. They do that, yeah. I got my one brother, he's super, super religious, kind of a Bible beater, you know? He wants to tell you how you're living your life wrong. He's one of these people, he's got a bumper sticker that says, the South will rise again, but his plates are from Columbus, so I don't know. <laughs> what that means. He pulled me aside at Christmas a couple years ago because he thought I was drinking too much. And uh, he wanted to quote the Bible to me. He was like, Mary, be not drunk with wine wherein there is excess. Instead, be filled with the Lord. Ephesians 5.18. As if two bottles of wine later I could even hear what he was saying. Like that's, like, come on. So what I did is I got drunk and I, uh, I quoted the Bible back to him, but with verses that I made up. <laughs> so I was just like, hey, Kyle, thou, thou shalt pass it the mashed potatoes. <laughs> Deuteronomy 918. Guess what? God looks down when you partake in redneckery. <laughs> Cautions A12. It's kind of dude that posted all over Facebook too. Like if you love Jesus. <laughs> one like equals one prayer. <laughs> if a like is going to protect you from, from death, then so is a shark net. Like that's just... <laughs> Not gonna happen. I'm, I'm laughing a little extra hard because both my brother and my dad are here right now. So that's... 
That's one of them. <laughs> I'm gonna guess that, well they're both dads now and that was definitely the dad whistle, you know what I mean? That was like the street lights came on and you're like, shit, I gotta go, like that's what, you know? <laughs> Dad and Kyle, did I lie about any of that? No! <laughs> <laughs> that I need to just, this is, <laughs> I've been in and out of therapy most of my adult life, okay? And I don't care how much money I spent, nothing will validate me more than that right there. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not really religious myself anymore. I kind of fell away from that, you know. But I do still play the lottery, you know. <laughs> Mainly because the pick threes never yelled at me on my way into a Planned Parenthood. <laughs> oh, man. The guy that I dated after my ex was a veterinarian. And that made me feel safe in like a weird way, you know? Because sometimes when you meet people, you don't know who they are. They don't really show you their true self until you've known them for a little while, you know? And something that men love to do is they roofie women. Uh, <laughs> if I caught you off guard, <laughs> so does it up for us, you know what I mean? Like that's... I should have said, imagine how we feel. Let's try that again, okay? If I caught you off guard, imagine how we feel. <laughs> We're not gonna use it, fuck it, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> don't do it, don't do that to women. We don't like it, okay? I'm not trying to get preacher, or make it uncomfortable or anything like that, it's just not our thing. Plus, if you're meeting a woman in her 30s or 40s off of a free dating app, uh, offer us the drugs, we'll take them, okay? <laughs> Promise. You don't gotta wait for me to go to the bathroom and try to sprinkle it in my drink. I'd be like, hey man, what is that? Is that Xanax shirt? What is that? Give me that. Molly? I don't care. We'll have a good night. But this guy's a veterinarian. So like, even if he wanted to drug me, how's he gonna do it? He's like, hide it in a piece of cheese. <laughs> Like, I'm eating that, that's cheese. Like, give me that, you know? I'll know it's drugs if he tries to massage it down my throat. Like, that would be... This dude sucked. <laughs> he did, man. He would refer to himself in the third person as Dr. Johnson. I'm like, dude, you put a cast on a bunny today. Like... Can we cool it with a doctor thing? <laughs> like, one time, Dr. Johnson took me to a corporate-sponsored happy hour, okay? Now, I already told you I grew up super poor, all right? You cannot take poor people to an open bar, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's our way of getting back what society took from us, okay? <laughs> Just think about the last wedding that you went to. Who was the drunkest person there? Was your cousin Kenny's plus one? with an eyebrow ring and a Disney princess tattooed on her tit? I was gonna say Tweety Bird, but Jimmy fucking stepped on my punchline, so. I'm sitting in the back, what the fuck is he doing, man? You know why? Because Amber walked in there, remembering, remembering how she didn't have heat in the winter of 07, so now she's gonna warm her soul with some fireball. I was getting annihilated at this happy hour, okay? I was getting so drunk. I was getting vodka drunk. You just start asking for vodka. <laughs> Problematic. Just shoving my way up to the bar, like, excuse me, bartender, hello, hi, I'm in need. Can you please have vodka in a cup and then in a separate cup, I'm in need cr cranberry juice. 
Because I know that you're short pouring me, okay? I know it. And you know how I know it? Because I used to be a bartender, bitch, okay? I get it. So I need a vodka one cup and cranberry juice in another cup. And do you have a phone charger back there? <laughs> I overheard Dr. Johnson call over one of the waiters and he goes, excuse me, what are the Scoville units on this sauce? All right. Scoville units measure the heat in peppers, okay? So like a green bell pepper has very low Scoville units. Habanero's much higher, right? Uh, that's a bullshit question to give to a 19-year-old server working at Buffalo Wild Wings, all right? <laughs> this child has no idea what you're talking about, okay? Like, he barely knows the difference between blue cheese and ranch, like. <laughs> he calls it chunks or no chunks. You're gonna hit him with Scoville units? Okay. <laughs> so now I'm drunk and I'm pissed, right? I was like, excuse me, Scoville units measure heat in peppers, not sauces. <laughs> you know, you may be Dr. Johnson, but you're no Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Yeah, we broke up. <laughs> Best part about that story though is like, like three months later, I'm hanging out at the bar and this dude is making a beeline for me and he just goes, yo, 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 no, 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 I know you don't remember who I am. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that to this day when Gary's acting like an asshole, we all call him Dr. Pepper. <laughs> When jokes like that get a really big laugh, I'm like, shit, do you guys know Gary? Like, that's... Because <laughs> that's his real name and he lives in this city, so... <laughs> he did one thing that I really didn't like and honestly don't understand. Uh, every time we would have sex, he would keep his shirt on. Okay. Your stunned silence says that we're all just dealing with this? We're all just... We're all just cool with this happening? No, men, take your shirt off. What are you, are you a chubby eighth grader at a pool party? Like, take your shirt off, okay? And your socks too, for that matter. How about we lose our socks? Yeah, my feet are cold. That's gonna last three minutes. You'll be fine. It's a fun part of the show, isn't it? <laughs> a lot of dates out there. See some chubby bearded dudes just sitting there like, hmm. <laughs> No, no, I'm fine. I just don't think women are funny. That's all. <laughs> A lot of women, really good wives and girlfriends just doing one of these right now. <laughs> no, stop. I don't care. Listen, it's... Why would I care? Why would I care? It's fine. I was watching TV last night. It's fine. I don't care. It's seriously. No, she's single. That's why she's single. She doesn't get it, okay? It's fine. What really threw me for a loop, though, is that he would keep his shirt on, but did not want to wear a condom. <laughs> I was like, bro, your nipples are not the bumps I'm worried about. <laughs> like, this is... <laughs> shirt off, condom on, okay? If you take nothing else from my show tonight, shirt off, condom on, all right? <laughs> Complain. I know I complain about dating a lot. I know that. I was talking to one of my friends. She's a little bit older than me, and uh, I was complaining to her, and uh, she's trying to give me dating advice. Now, she is married to her high school sweetheart, okay? And they have been together for 25 years. That is a real number, and uh, if you're in love, I'm happy for you. I don't care how you got there. I'm very happy. I love seeing love, all right? But 
hold on, what's going on over here? Are you married to your high school sweetheart? Are you married to your high school sweetheart? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's okay, that's cool. You're just not gonna like this part, that's all. I just, to me, I feel like marrying your high school sweetheart is learning how to ride a bike and then refusing to get your driver's license. Like, that's just, you're just paddling along, like, nope, one helmet for me. This is all I need for the rest of my life. I'm good, right here. Like, I'm happy for you. If you're in love, that's awesome. That's great. I just don't, you can't tell me what to put on my Tinder. Like, that's, you don't get it. Especially when you've been in a relationship for that long. They've been together for 25 years. Make some noise if you've been with your significant other more than 10 or 15 years. Okay. Shut the fuck up around your single friends, all right? You guys don't get it. You don't know what dating is like. As much as you want to think that you do, you don't. You guys go out to eat together, you don't say a goddamn word to each other, all right? The only reason you leave the house is because you have a gift card. And that's fine, I get it. You'll finish each other's sentences, but like out of spite, and that's cool, you know? She'd be like, did I tell you I went to Target? And he's like, I know, the lamp was 30% off. I can't fucking do this anymore, dude. Like, I can't. She was trying to tell me that I was too picky. You're too picky and that's your problem. That's why you're single, because you're too picky. And, I was, and then she said this, she said, well, you know, there's not that big of a difference between a five and an eight. I was like, other than three? <laughs> like who taught you math? That's like a 30% difference, dude. What are you talking about? There's such a difference that if they did the exact same thing, I would react completely differently. Like if it were an eight, I'd be like, oh, he surprised me at work with flowers. But if it were a five, I'd be like, dude, he showed up at my workplace. <laughs> this guy's like, fuck you, bitch, I'm out. <laughs> he's wearing a Miles Garrett jersey that has definitely been on while he's been inside somebody, for sure. Yeah, he hit him with a helmet. I'll hit you with a helmet, baby. Come on. <laughs> it makes me sad that I know some of you are, are laughing too hard because you've definitely fucked in Browns jerseys before. I know you have. I know this city. I've been to the Muni lot. I understand it. If you're offended by that five and eight thing, don't be, okay? It's, it's just the truth. Like an eight with a man bun, he probably thinks he's a model, right? A five with a man bun thinks he's a samurai. I know it goes for women too, I know it does. Like an eight can flirt her way out of a speeding ticket. A five has at least two DUIs. <laughs> My friend was like, listen, if you're just gonna be like that, why, you do, she's like, you do shows all over Cleveland, why don't you just date somebody that you meet after a show? Why don't you just go out with somebody that you meet after a show? I'm like, hmm, cause here's the type of people that I meet after shows, okay? <laughs> I was doing a show one time, I'm hanging out by the merch table just trying to sell some posters to pay my rent. That's all I'm interested in, right? This guy walks up to me, he looks at the poster, and then he looks at me, and he says, I don't have any more cash, but I could give you this dick. <laughs> Do you know what the worst part about it was? He kept his shirt on. I do have those posters for sale. I got so much shit up here. I'm sorry, I'm gonna show you guys real quick. If you're interested, I have them after the show. They say uh, Mary Santora crushing it on there and they have a spilled out bottle of booze and a pot leaf and a hot dog and a hamburger and a chicken wing on them. <clears throat>
my graphic designer was like, what do you want on your posters? And I was like, I don't know, man, I'm like the cool guy at the barbecue. So that's what we got. Uh, <laughs> That's what we got. Uh, I normally do $10 for them, but if you, uh, I know COVID hit everybody hard, man. It knocked out 60% of my income with stand-up. So I know if you got a couple extra bucks you want to throw my way, I'd really appreciate it. You know, you, you're from Bay Village, you got two, $300. Uh, <laughs> whatever helps. I got cash, uh, Venmo, PayPal, all that good stuff. I have a lot of friends that tell me, I, I don't want kids. Okay, I do not want children, all right? And I, thank you. I don't want kids. And I have so many of my friends that are like, oh my God, you gotta have kids. You'd be such a good mom. You'd be such a good mom. And I'm like, I crashed six cars while I was drunk. The fuck about me? <laughs> Makes you think that I would be a good mom. Like, come on, man. You don't have to lie to me, all right? You know what kind of mom I'd be? The kind of mom who pays child support. Like. <laughs> I know people get uncomfortable with that because it's not supposed to go that way, I know. <laughs> Being a mom's the hardest job in the world, I understand that. Yeah, some people aren't good at their job. <laughs> that right there in comedy, I'll, I'll peel back the curtain for you guys, that's called knowing laughter, that's what that is. <laughs> Cause that second wave was from her friends, like fucking your payments due, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> My friends don't let up with it. Gotta have some kids, you gotta have some kids. When are you gonna have some kids? I was like, fine, fine. You want me to have some kids? I'm gonna have some kids, all right? I'm gonna do it on my terms, okay? So I'm gonna have them and I'm gonna name them so it sounds like they have a speech impediment, but they don't. <laughs> So like, I'd never name my son Richard, but I'd absolutely name my son Wichold. <laughs> yeah. I'm having a bunch of them too. I'm having a Wichold, a Whoopold, a Kata, a Whitney. I don't give a shit, okay? You asked for this, all right? And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, I don't know if I could have a Whitney. You know what I mean? Like. Little girls are terrible people. They tease the hell out of her. Like, what, what would Whitney grow up to be? <laughs> Best case scenario, she opens a karaoke bar. <laughs> right, Whitney's karaoke? You're going there six nights a week. <laughs> Thank you for coming down to Thirsty Thursdays here at Whitney's karaoke. Yeah, we got $2 fireball shots and buckets of White Claw. We're gonna get crazy. <laughs> coming up next, we got Brian singing some Bruno Mars. Let's hear for Brian. <laughs> That's best case scenario, okay? <laughs> Worst case scenario, phone sex operator for guys who are into speech impediments. <laughs> Thank you for calling 1-800-WHEEL-GIRLS. <laughs> Disbwinny. <laughs> to hear what I'm wearing, press one. to whip out all your wildest dreams. <laughs> Plus two. For more about my exclusive butthole pleasures. <laughs> Plus three. <laughs> You've selected butthole pleasures. Oh, baby, put it in my dumple. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, if you're not laughing at that joke because you don't think that it's funny, I'm okay with that, I promise, okay? But I know for a fact that there are some of you sitting out there not laughing right now because you just found out what you're into. <laughs> Give it up for Hilarities for having us here tonight.
gonna get I'm gonna get really sappy and sentimental for one minute, okay? And then I promise I'm gonna do one more joke and then we'll get out of here. But uh, this is this means a lot to me to do this here. This means a lot to me to do this here. Not only at Hilarities, but in Cleveland. Um, it's it's funny story. I was bartending and serving at House of Blues across the street starting in 2012. I used to work over there, and uh, the owner Nick would come in for lunch, and I would see him, and I'm like, oh my god, that's a comedy club guy. Like, oh shit. Like, how do I get in? And I'd be all nervous, and I'd spill shit. And it was a mess. You know what I mean? And then finally I like started doing shows here and they were like these late night gigs and I'd get like five minutes at a time and then eventually it was like, oh my God, I'm on the main stage. I get to do a guest set on the main stage. And then you get a hosting weekend and then you get a feature weekend. And then last year I had my very first headlining set here and we sold it out, it was unbelievable. And then this record deal came up and then, yeah, no, thank you guys. I didn't know that I was gonna be able to do it in Cleveland and then we were able to and you guys showed up and they showed up and it just means the world to me because this place is like home. This place is like a second home. So give it up for them one more time. The absolute best thing that you can do to help keep their doors open is tell a friend. Just tell people like, hey, we went down to Hilarities, we had an amazing time, felt super safe. You know, they got the partition, social distancing, all that. And just, just let people know that they're doing it right, you know, they need our help. And if you don't feel that way, just shut the fuck up then, all right? So, I don't really care. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna tell you guys one more story. We're lucky, we are very lucky to have such a good comedy club here because I travel all over the country and a lot of cities don't have comedy clubs at all. And those lead to some very fun gigs. Uh, I will tell you guys about the absolute scariest time I've ever had on stage, okay? The most terrified I have ever been. A couple summers ago, I was doing a show at a very small, shitty, punk rock dive bar in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, because my comedy career is soaring. Um, <laughs> Walked into the bar, there was like six people at the bar, nobody knew that a comedy show was happening. They had Kino TVs on, people are smoking inside, there's a Confederate flag on the ceiling, like it's just not a welcoming environment, okay? I walked up to the bartender and I was like, hey man, I'm one of the comics for tonight, when did you want to get the show started? He handed me a microphone and he said, all right, <laughs> go ahead. Like, are you letting a dog out? Because that's not how you start a comedy show, man. Like, it's like, whatever, I'm gonna do my time, I'm gonna get the hell out of Tennessee, all right? So if I'm standing on the stage, five feet to my right is the only way in and out of the bar, okay? And then over here to my left is the bar itself, and then there's kind of a little hallway that goes back to the left, and that's the whole place, all right? So I'm halfway through my set, and the door to the bar just flies open, okay? Like, like hard, and what's standing there is what can best be described as a real-life bridge troll. <laughs> okay? Now, don't feel bad, because you're picturing it right, okay? Like, whatever image is in your head is accurate, all right? Like, this bitch, it was a woman. Uh, she, she had, like, half her hair up in a bun, and then the other half was, like, shaved or blown off in a meth explosion. I have no idea what was happening on this half of her head, okay? Her face looked like, like have you ever seen a jack-o'-lantern two weeks after Halloween? <laughs> same shape, same number of teeth, it was a nightmare, okay? And honestly, here was, here, here's what pissed me off about her. She's one of those people whose flip-flops are too small. Have you seen those maniacs where their foot is touching the shoe and the ground at the same time? You're just like, these are a dollar at Walmart. Like, have some respect for yourself and clip your goddamn toenails, okay? Just a human trash fire is standing in front of me, okay? And if you're still having trouble picturing it, it's like any middle-aged white lady that you see waddling out of a buffet in Parma. <laughs> and I told her, I was like, hey, come on in, free comedy. And she goes, oh, I did it. And that's it. And then she slammed the door and she disappeared back to Narnia or wherever the fuck she came from. No idea where this bitch went, all right? But I said to the audience, I was like, man, this is going so great. I can't even get a crackhead to come into the bar for free. Yes. It's kind of funny. Don't make fun of crackheads. I get it, okay? From three feet to my left behind the bar, the bartender yelled out, that's my fucking wife! <laughs> no. 
And the first thing I thought was, this bitch got married. <laughs> My shit got called off. I was like, am I the five and she's the eight? What the fuck is going on here, all right? I didn't say any of that, though. I just started apologizing profusely. I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. There's no way I could have known. He cuts me off and he goes, you better hope she didn't hear you because she'll stab you to death. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to die in Tennessee. This is the end of it. <laughs> silence fell over the bar, okay? There was so much tension in the room and nobody knew what to do. That silence was broken by a, ba a man in a dirty wife beater turning around from the bar for the first time the whole show and just going... Yo, I can't be on cops again. <laughs> when he said that, my comedy brain kicked in. I was like, okay, he broke the silence. He said something funny. Piggyback off of it. Get yourself out of this, all right? And before I could even stop the words from coming out of my mouth, I just looked at the bartender and said, oh, she's going to stab me to death, huh? <laughs> kind of sounds like something a crackhead would do. <laughs> yeah. This dude lost his mind, okay? He started breaking bottles. He's screaming at me. He's like, get the fuck out. Get the fuck out of my bar. And I'm like, I can't go outside. That's where the bridge troll is. Like, I can't. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then from the back of the room, a man that I did not see at the show the entire time, my knight in shining armor came up and rescued me. Okay? Now, this is a five foot two, 110 pound, incredibly gay black man. Okay? <laughs> he marched over to me, hooked me, my, hooked me by my arm, walked me out and said, I got you, honey. They scared of me here. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. My name is Mary Santora.